Our next guest is not only a world-recognized scientist, but a really good jazz musician. It was his band, the Straight Jackets, that you heard earlier tonight. He is a man of many talents. Now, because it is hard to find a good place to practice saxophone without driving everybody crazy, he gets to UBC early in the morning and parks his car in the parking lot and practices sax in his car. <laughs> now, he's about to publish a book that has already got people talking around the world. Is everything we learned about germs and bacteria wrong? Are we harming our children by trying to keep them safe? Please welcome Brett Finley. Look to your left. Look to your right. What do you see? People, right? Wrong. I got seven minutes to convince you otherwise, and that's what I'm going to try and do. OK, so to begin this story, we have to go way back. We go way back to 1883. Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek, he's a guy that makes claws and, and dyes these claws. And he figured, well, I could look at the weave a little closer if I made a really kind of microscope. So we engineered a microscope, the first microscope in the world. And he could see these things. And what else do I do with it? So he swabbed out his mouth, looked it up, held it up to the sky. And you could see all these little wiggly things. He called them animacules. And he made the stunning observation there were more of these animacules in his mouth than all the people in the Netherlands, which is where he lived. And that was the discovery of microbes. That was a profound discovery, and basically it went dormant for about 350 years. So what I want to convince you of is you're actually more microbial than human. There's 10 times more microbes living in and on you than there are human cells. I try and tell my students, you're microbes, you're not humans. Yeah, there's a little human there, but they encode 150 times more genes than we do, than Homo sapiens do. So they have this huge genetic um, potential. Where are they? They're basically wherever your body is exposed to the environment. They're on the skin, they're in their eyes, um, genital tract, and especially in the intestine. That's where lots and lots of them live. And just to give you some numbers, one gram of feces contains more microbes than the entire world's population. Think about that the next time you go to the can. <laughs> But we kind of ignored them. We knew they were there, but we didn't really know what they did. And micro even microbiologists, because we couldn't grow them. You take a feces, you streak it out, you actually can't grow very much. E. coli grows. That's why everyone studies E. coli, because Dr. Escherichia streaked his own feces, and we got Escherichia coli out of that. But technology has changed. We can now sequence these things. We don't have to grow them. And we have the capacity to actually go in and sequence these things and without growing them. And based on the sequence, we can get a picture of who's there. It's kind of like getting a list of all the people in this room without going to ask their name. We just can figure this out. And that's just opened up a whole new world for us because we can now actually start to study these things and figure this out. And let me tell you, this is a major scientific revolution. In the last five years, there's profound changes happening. Each of you have about 1,000 different microbial species in your gut. And each of you is different. They're personal. There's no, there's no species that are microbial species that are conserved across everyone in the world. Each of you has a unique set of microbes that is you. It's based on what you eat, your exposure, the environment you live in, your parents, your pets, whatever. And each person has their own set of microbes. And so what do they do? Well, there's this profound revolution in science. And this is my absolutely favorite, favorite curve. Because on, on, on your left is infectious diseases over 50 years in our society. They're going down. I work on infectious diseases. I take one look at this curve, and that's not a good place to be. I like the curve on the right. These are Western diseases. There's asthma. There's inflammatory bowel disease, multiple sclerosis, to, um, diabetes. These are what we call the Western diseases. They're going through the roof. This is 50 years. We have not genetically changed in 50 years. We're going through, what, two generations. Something's happened. And what I'm trying to convince you of is we now realize the microbes are playing a major role in all those diseases on the right. An area we work on is asthma. So when I was a little kid, nobody had asthma. We actually, one kid in my school had asthma. And he was a weirdo because he had a puffer and he must be a mutant, right? He's different. <laughs> Now you go to the playground, kid takes a puff, runs up the slide, hands a puffer to his friend, puffer friend takes a puff and passes it down the line. The run. 10, 15% of all kids in Canada have asthma. What has happened in that short time period? 
What work in our lab has actually shown that we can look for microbes really early in life, three months of age. If you have these three, four microbes in your feces at three months of age, you basically don't get asthma. And we now know we can actually transplant these microbes into mouse asthma models and show these things actually protect against asthma. So not only can we figure out if the kid's at risk of asthma, if we get it right, we should in theory be able to change these bugs and maybe actually prevent them getting asthma. It's a really exciting field. It's changing obesity, diabetes, even brain issues. Um, there's autism, there's hints of microbes involved in this, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. You can take a depressed mouse, do a fecal transfer into a normal mouse, it gets depressed just by changing the feces. What's that about? Gut brain axis, we call it. So major things coming there. <laughs> I love feces. I work on diarrhea, okay? It's our bread and butter. So you've probably heard about these things called fecal transfers. This hour of 22 minutes did a killer skit on this. If you ever want to laugh yourself silly, this is where I stole this slide from. But it's not a laughing matter in a sense. So there's this disease called, caused by Clostridium difficile. It's especially in Ontario and Quebec. You go in for surgery, you have antibiotics. Antibiotics carpet bomb your microbiota. They get rid of them all, and this thing crawls in, and it's a very life-threatening disease. Antibiotic causes it, so they actually are terrible at fixing it, and you get maybe a 20% cure rate. You do a fecal transfer, you get 98% cure rate, you're saved. It's gross, but hey, given the option, it's, it's, it's kind of good. So this is, unfortunately, it's rather crude science these days, but this is going to change. We're going to get much more sophisticated and figure out which bugs we want to add and how we want to do this. So uh, we're starting to realize microbes affect all sorts of things. We have a group funded by CIFAR that actually looks at the concept, can they affect our evolution? When, you, when a mother gives birth to a kid, she actually passes along the microbes. They're a genetic component. Is that, is that evolution? And are the microbes, say, convincing you you should eat these fats and sugars because they like them, and maybe they're driving your behavior, et cetera? So there's all sorts of fascinating areas going on in this area. So where are we going? Well, the future is going to be really exciting in this area. We're just sort of opening, opening this whole window up. We don't know all these things. But I am going to put in a plug for this book that we have written. It's called Let Them Eat Dirt. It's written by um, Claire Arietta and myself. And this was a profound experience for me. The effects of these microbes on a kid growing up are, are really amazing. And really, from starting from when you're conceived or when you're delivered, a fecal um, content in a vaginal delivery is very different than a C-section. Breastfed versus bottle fed. These things are all affecting it. And so there's a profound effect in early in life. The other effect we're starting to see is later in life, boomer bugs, I'm starting to call these things. And they actually start to affect how things, how you age. And there's some studies coming out, healthy aging. Frailty, for example, microbes affect calcium. Cardiovascular disease, microbes affect that. Type 2 diabetes, microbes affect that. So maybe there's hope in that sense, too. And whenever someone says, I'm studying aging, especially if they're a woman, they say, well, what about wrinkles? And so there's actually some data that's starting to come out in that area, too. They affect collagen. So basically, my concept is, that, you know, next time you look at your neighbor, look at them now. They don't look quite the same as they did seven minutes ago, right? <laughs> See all these little squiggly things all over their face? Love your microbes. Thank you very much.